Welcome back. Today we're going to do a little wet fly that you can you can adapt this to anything you want to fish. I like you know I like to tie flies like this because you know everybody wants a recipe. This one you can modify a little bit, change the colors, do whatever you want, change the size where you set things. But the overall value to the fly is always the same thing. It's going to be the base color is going to show through. It's a soft tackle, and you're going to have the kind of encapsulation of the the one feather around it, you can have a little thorax, you're gonna have a little hackle in front of it. It's, pretty, it's, a, it's a pretty simple fly, really elegant fly, if you, especially as you dress this up. This, and this fly, this is kind of an adaptation that, from the, my steelhead flies in the old days where, and I would bring those down and I would just, you know, especially the Lady Caroline and other flies like that that were so quintessential steelhead and, and classy. And it, I would always try to make them trout, right? And because in the old days, way before there was a thing called trout spay. Uh, really, in most of my life, pre-streamer, pre we swung a lot of wet flies. That's just kind of, it's how I learned to fly fish. And they're, they're incredibly effective. And so this was always an adaptation, just trying to make bigger flies little to see if the trout would eat them. And, this, and I did this when I've done it before, and I've, I've talked about that, the Henryville Special and the Queen of the Waters two of the, my dad's favorite wet flies, and I fished a ton of those. And this is just kind of one of them. It's, a, it's just an adaptation with just a, a little bit of dress up on it. So uh, what you're gonna see here, it's gonna be, you can tie this on any, uh, any really any 2X, 3X long wet fly. It's a little different than your traditional wet flies. It's just, it's a little longer hook. Again, it's an adaptation off of the steelhead flies. And so, I'm going to use a, this is a, a 205, 12, I think I grabbed, size 12. You can do whatever you want. I mean, like I said, I, you can do them small. I don't usually go much smaller than a 12 on these. And, and I used to use almost exclusive the 200R, which is still a Tiemco, lighter wire hook. Um, but I, I, it doesn't really matter. And again, the hook, the weight of the hook is no more than it's going to drop that fly maybe an inch or two in the water at best, right? It's just a, it's just... But some people think it helps track the fly, you know, with the hook down better. I don't see that much difference. It's just whatever, whatever you get used to. Uh, the body, I'm going to use four strand rayon. Oops, sorry about that. Four strand, that doesn't show you anything. Uh, it's just four strands. This is all it is. Four strands of rayon. Uh, I'll show you something about that in a second. We're going to have a rib, uh, extra small, or small, uh, small or extra small gold wire, whatever, I kind of match the color of the body I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to use a, a CDL, a Cote de Leon wet fly neck. This stuff, it's, you know, it's a great substitute for partridge. Um, it's in it's, and you'll see when I get in there, it's just kind of, it's a little soft and it's, it's, it's fine. And it's, it's not overbearing on the fly. It just kind of, it gives that hint, that little illusion of it being encapsulated. And I just, I like it. You can use, you want to use a wet fly, like I grabbed a green, you know, you want to do a really fun one, a green well or a furnace. Either one of these necks would be great. I mean, either one of them, they got the black rachis, the stripe down the middle, gives it a really cool accent. And again, you can do whatever you want. When you get into the lighter color, especially in those green phases, uh, if you want to go for a grizzly or something in that gray phase, it's just, it, this is totally up to you. And then underneath the, the, the hackle, I'm going to have a small, this is just a brown uh, pine squirrel skin. I'm going to put a little tiny dubbing loop, and that's a little different than some of the, you know, especially on your traditional wet flies. But again, it's kind of a, it, it's scaling down a steelhead fly into a trout world, which just lends itself super to right now because there's so much trout spay going on. Uh, it just makes it a really, it's a fun fly. And, there, and, and, I, and I guarantee you, for those of you who have not tried wet fly swinging, and it, it is very successful. It's, it's a great searching pattern. Uh, and I said, like I said, I, I, from the time I was probably eight, seven, eight years old until you got into the 70s and we just started really mat, hatch matching, you know, in the late 70s, mid to late 70s. But we kind of, especially in Michigan, we didn't have that day hatch. And we, we would search pre-streamer. We would search with wet flies all the time. And man, they're really successful. So when you look at this, I'm gonna have this set up. So I'm gonna go, it's a long hook and we're gonna have to fill all this. So I'm just gonna start my thread up front where I want the, where I want the, 
I'm going to put it where I want the bump for this a little bit back, about a, about a quarter of the way back, where I'm going to put that little collar, which you'll see in a minute. And so I'm going to accelerate this thread back here to the gouge, just like, uh, like normal. But with this style of hook, the gouge is further back. And what I'm going to do is when I put this in, I'm going to use, I'm going to have a tag and then I'm going to have my wire and I'm going to, and it's just, it's just, just a habit. And I used to do this a lot where I would tag, which is going to be the first like eighth of an inch. I would use the gold wire right straight up to that. And then I just adapted it a little bit differently. And, and but again, feel free to, to play with that and you know, just your proportions. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And so this rayon, and I'm going to tell you something about this rayon. It's not that big a deal on a working fly like this, but I really suggest you get these little spool tenders for this rayon. Uh, what I notice a lot, and a, and, a, and a way to stop it, if you're doing it old school where you're hooking it in your spool, uh, get over here, because it's four strand, what I like to see is I, when you pull this off, you can get, and you won't be able to see it, I didn't do it that hard, but you can start getting a little bit of just like one little fiber will hold in there. And all of a sudden you'll be unwrapping and you'll have different, you'll have different, there'll be different lengths here. One will be one or two turns further than the other one. And when you come off of those, these edges that where you stick that in the edge to hold it, you'll frequently will fray it. And you know, it, like I said, this is a working fly. It's not a big deal, but if you're going to, if you're a, you know, advanced tire and you're, you're doing Atlantic salmon, so you, you guys run silk gloves and stuff like that to keep that from happening. But this is an easy way to do it because you just don't, they don't get undone and you don't hook it in anything tight. So they don't start fraying and, and it's kind of a pain when you start going and you're fraying these things. So I'm going to pull off just enough of this uh, and it's four strand. I, I virtually never tie with four strands. And uh, in a side, anything smaller than this, I would generally use one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, for expediency, just to build a little faster, I'm gonna use two strands, set your other ones down. Uh, another thing is don't cut these one at a strand, just cut them in, if you have to waste a couple, great, but it, it gets uh, unruly if you've got one little one and long one, blah, blah, blah. So, just makes it a little, you, you, you're gonna tie at least four flies anyway. So we're gonna tie that in. I'm going to tie this rayon right at the bend. So when you see when I tie this in, I've got, when I drop my bobbin, it's holding right there, it's, and it's right at the gouge, and it'll make nice, smooth turns. And I just realized I don't have my glasses, so this will be really interesting. So now I'm going to just be very careful and kind of nice, smooth turns forward, and just keep watching that they're not going to uh, really unstrand on you. If it does like that one, just unstrand it a bit. Uh, just keep them, just spin them a little bit. And I'm going to get up here one more turn, and that's personal, whatever, you know, whatever you like the looks of. And I'm going to cinch this down. I should have wrapped that up. And I'm going to tie in my wire, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little bit of, I'm going to get a little bit of, the wire's not enough to weight your fly, and I, I just covered that up. I'm going to build, made a little bulk right there. I'm going to take this gold wire, we are just talking about this, gold wire can be like four different shades it seems lately. They, it tarnishes, it's just whatever your, whatever the look you, whatever you like the looks of. And I just cut that kind of short, I don't know what I was thinking, I wasn't thinking. And so, just get it so it's not too coiled up on you. And I'm going to go back up here to the front where I was. And I'm going to tie this in. And I'm going to let it roll over just a little bit. And I'm going to fold this back over. You don't really have to do this. I'm just building a little bit of bulk with this. And I'm going to cut that off so I think I got it right. Jeremiah? Watch your glasses. Break. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice attempt to think that I was going to be able to do that all the way through. Not happening. Whew. This fly could be really ugly right now. All right. So I built a little bulk with that, and I'm going to, and I'm a little bit further back than I wanted to be with that wire. Get things arranged. That's what happens when you try to do things blind. 
Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to and I'm just going to clean this up so it's nice and smooth. I don't want to have when you wrap with with any kind of floss, it just shows through. And you're going to wrap a hackle over it and all that stuff, but it helps to get in the habit of having it clean. Just just make it clean right from the get-go and everything will look better in the end, but again, you probably wouldn't see that on something this small anyway. So this is where I don't want this, this rayon to start fraying. And I'm going to go right over top of that. This has a little bit, there's a little bit back or forward, I mean. And so I'm just keeping it smooth and I'm, fray, I'm fraying that a little bit. And I've got, my hands are rough. It's winter, we're tying, it's winter. And you can see an occasional fray right there. That's why you'll see people running gloves on that. So I'm trying to lighten up on the squeezing with my hands. So I just get nice smooth wraps. But I, I'm fraying that up pretty well. And again, it's all because my, my hands are so rough right now. I'm going to get up here right to where I want that bump to be. I'm letting it, it's getting a little bit, it's starting to taper down just a little bit. And I'm, I'm going to build over top of that. So just cinch that up, get that just tied off. <clears throat> we've got to put our hackle and we've got to put our bump in there, our little, our little fur collar. But I can see, even me, which, you know, I'm pretty blind, I can see a handful of those frayed straight, you know, strands in there. It's not terrible, but it is, it is, again, if you, anything, anything rough on your fingers grabs that stuff and just, it just frays it all out. So what I'm going to do with this hackles, and, and I'm going to use two sizes, and I, I particularly like these, I particularly like these necks because I get two sizes of hack. You don't get a ton of variance in the hackles in here. And, and it's going to be longer, and it's supposed to be, because it's supposed to encapsulate around the fly. But then I get the longer ones for the collar up front, for the actual hackle, and they're really heavily barred. If you haven't worked with this, it's really cool. Any kind of wet fly. It's just got, it's really, it's very barred like it would be if it was partridge. I've already picked a couple off of there, so I'm going to tie this in. And I'm going to tie this in, and I'm going to strip aside, because I don't like to have a really heavy buildup on this. And you're gonna, you can decide what you want in that. I'm gonna tie it in from the butt first and wrap backwards so my longest hackle's at the front as I go back. But again, I don't really want, and I'll show you in the close up there. I'm just gonna pull, as you're looking at the feather, you always look at the shiny side of the feather to, to, you know, when you're looking at it. I pull the right side off so I can, when I wrap, so when the stem's on there, that's what's wrapping around it. So as the stem goes around, there's no hackle getting trapped. And I've just taken down a little bit of the bulk. I don't, I don't want a lot of bulk on this. And so, so I'm gonna tie this in from the bottom, right onto the material, right in front here. And you're gonna watch this, watch your stem, that it's gonna lay how you want it to when you go around, right? And then just tie it off. Make sure everything's sitting where it belongs. I waxed that thread just so these are pretty fine. And come here. Get you out of the way. Now we're just going to, and I, I, I strip that one side so that I can, I just don't want as much bulk. And so I'm gonna make sure it's, I get one good turn right there. It's not, you're gonna have, this is gonna get pretty well covered. And then just open them up and just make sure it's staying back where you want it. I'm going to end up with a maybe, you know, four, maybe five turns. You're just coming back and just, just, I kind of just look at it. And it's when I see what I like, when I, you know, if I want, generally it's all, it's five turns or so, but just look at it. And when I, not as you start tying more and more and more of them, because then you want to do, like you want to kind of say, I want five turns. But as you're doing your first one, just look at it. And see, does that look like what you want to see on your fly? Do you, when you stroke those back and everything's laying, that looks about right to me. If you want three, great. You know, this is, this is your, your fly. Now just go forward and before you do, make sure they're kind of, you know, wispy and out there. Get up here and you don't trap many. You just, just go forward. I've got three turns right there. Catch my wire. And... Before you go too far, just look at it. It looks good to me. 
And so, get up there. Now I've got, now I'm gonna, this is where I dress it with this little bit of a collar. And so we're gonna, and, then, and I just look things over. Look at, look it over. Is it where you want it? Is everything laying? And again, I stripped that one side of that feather off for, because I like it to look really sparse. If you want it thick, leave the feather on and, and go back. That's completely up to you. So now, you know, take, we're going to build a really small uh, dubbing loop here. And I picked this brownie tan. This is a tan pine squirrel. I just, I picked this color just because it, it tends to match the hackle. You know, I kind of came in here. I'm going to use kind of the darker brown spot of this. I just picked a color. You want to, you want it to contrast. You want it a little darker. Great. Just, you know, the, again, you get to, you get to freelance on this one. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick this is going to be at two turns maximum, two turns of for this collar. I don't like that one. And I'm looking for, I don't know if you can see this or not. I like, when you look at these pine squirrels, when you look at it from the top, you can see it's kind of speckly up here. And it's, can you see that forward or back better? That forward works. Right there. You can see they're kind of speckly. And, I, and that's just what I like to look at. And so I went in there and I... I you know, it's it's going to get mostly covered up anyway, but I was just looking for one I didn't like. I cut a little piece off when I looked at it, didn't look, didn't quite give me what I want. And all I do is I stand that hackle up, or that hair up, so it's straight up. And when I transfer it, you'll see there's it's all the same length. And then you know, keep a, keeping a good grip on it, so you're not you're not losing. You don't want the tips to change length. And so I'm just, I'm kind of looking it over and trying to decide where's that collar going to be, how long do I want it. And then when I see what I like, and I always like to have just a little bit of that fuzz, that, that darker fuzz, the gray, the body fur, I like to have a little bit of that in there all the time. So then I'm going to just take, and if you don't manhandle this, you just, you know, just hold it in your hand, open that up and come in and if you just drop it, your loop you can manipulate this you can see i can manipulate it with my finger just like that <clears throat> it's not much to you can you can adjust things if you see it you can come in and you like i can see right there that one's a little bit crooked i just bumped it just bump it get it in there and you'll get another chance to adjust it in a second but i can see it's right there it's just you'll get used to just handling that just really lightly you get another chance to mix. It's a little bit crooked right now. I did a little more than I should have. And then once you get it spun, <clears throat> you look at it, and you can see it's just a little fuzz ball. And that first one right there is a little bit. It was a little bit off. I can still adjust it right now. So all I'm going to do is when I come around here, I'm going to, and I'll do this manually without that, so you can see it. I'm going to get one turn before I start, so it's really close to that hook. Just wet your fingers and put, just hold it back. So there's one, one good full turn right there. Two full turns. Yeah, it looks good. Two full turns. And I could have put a third one on there, but it's just, it's, I don't need it. It's, this is, this bump is really nothing more than to, it's going to create this little ball. When I wrap the hackle, it's going to make it, wrap around it with a little bit of fullness <clears throat> so now you can see it's got this cute little collar on it so it's nice and it's it's a little thicker than it's a little thicker than the rest of the body now i'm going to take a the other hackle i already picked that one out i'm going to take this hackle and i took it off the shoulder right here and in, in anywhere down in the back side of it you know getting down the shoulders but right here it, and as you can see how barred those feathers are. And I just grabbed one that was barred nicely and, and I'm gonna tie this in traditional wet fly by the tip. And you just, again, we're gonna have two turns maybe. 
And so, but I like to lay this up here and look, if you look at the stem, I don't want it to go past any of the other hackle back here. So you can see where that hackles. And that's again, totally personal. You want it shorter, great. But it helps to do this on purpose, especially in the beginning when you're, when you first start tying a fly, you know, you kind of just wing it and you look at it afterwards. Well, if you look at this where you're going to tie it in, and I don't like my hackle to be much past where this little bit of hackle here holds, right? So when you lay it in there, that's just about exactly how long I want it. And so I'm not going to, and there's a little bit of taper to your feather. It's a little bit shorter up here than down here, not much. And I just picked right there's where the length of the hackles that I want. And I'm going to just tie it in right there. You could come back further. You can see they're just a little shorter and I want about two turns. So I'll tie it in tip first right here. Just uh, get under there. Just hook that, give it a couple turns, fold that back over and you can, you can get rid of that right now. You can, you're, the tip, <clears throat> just cut that off. If you forgot it, it really wouldn't make much difference. So now I'm going to, and I can't tell, am I blocking that camera nope, with my good. shoulder? So now I'm going to, same thing you do with your dubbing loop. Just come in and wet your fingers just a little bit and keep that hackle back. And I, I, I've always done this with my fingers. If you're using a, a hackle or hackle pliers, that's fine too. Just fold it back and you can see all the hackles going in the same direction. I'm trying to, so you can see right there. Mm -hmm. So you just, I'm going to get, I just, and now it's just a matter of looking at it. When you, as you go around looking at it, that's two complete turns. I'm going to go one more. I'm going to go three turns on that. Catch your hackle. <clears throat> Flip things over. One more. Just fold that right back over top of it. And we're going to build this small head. And we'll have, and again, these are great swing flies, great for, you could adapt this into just slightly bigger if you're a trout spay cat. And you'll have a, you should have about a three turn head on that. That's how I like mine. What you do is up to you and just catch that. So what you see is you can see in here, kind of dial it up a little bit. What you can see is in the, when you look at the close-up, which is going to be the close-up front. Okay, I got to look at this side. What you can see, what this little fur collar does is it built this thorax, right? It built this kind of puffy little thorax. And so as the hackle goes around, it's not going to want to, it's going to leave that build. It's going to build that little puffy ball. To me, to my eye, that just looks fishy. It looks... It builds a thorax, it builds a little bit of movement to your feather when it's wet, because obviously it's going to be drawn down, and that's going to get like that, and it's going to leave a little bit of puff to that. And every time as it's catching current, it's going to, it's going to give lifelike movement, right? It's just going to pulse a little bit. So it's a super fun fly. It's a, and again, four or five colors, you know, what, or four or five sizes, I mean, if you wanted to. I tend to leave it in the in a 12, 14 is about what I, for my, my own. Uh, you, and again, you can do, if you want to do your tag all the way forward, silver, gold, or whatever it is, it's just one adaptation. It's just one way to do it. It's a fun, it's a fishy fly. It's a fishy little fly. And you can go up again, take it all the way to a steelhead size if you wanted to. It's pretty, it's, it's a quick fly, versatile, and it fishes like crazy. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.